everyone here, there, and everywhere. Um, welcome, Pastor Ken, and, and, and I said Pastor Joe. <laughs> but I kind of feel like Joe is we got that part of our ministry. But anyway, it's so good to be here, and uh, we have a beautiful service today on, on the prodigal son, and just kind of welcoming us back home again. I love that. I wanted to make a special announcement about um, uh, well, we'll have communion together next Sunday. Whenever we have communion, I bring communion to Rachel, and I bring it to Wilbur and Eleanor. And they're living across town now. They used to be in the Waterford. And so Judy and I went there last week, and we were singing songs with Wilbur and Eleanor. And, and Eleanor says, I just love this so much, I want to go out the hallway, and I want to bring people in so we can sing together. And so Judy and I said, well, why don't we do that? So this next Sunday, right after church, right outside, if you want to ride with me or ride, ride with Judy, right after church, we're going to go and drive. We'll probably be there about an hour or a little more. We'll come back before lunch. Uh, so if you want to come, we're just going to invite the people from their place to come and sing with us. And we'll bring song books and we'll just sing together. So think about it. And if you want to drive there too, you can follow us. So they'll be really blessed to have all of us as well. So thanks everyone. As we gather, wherever there is celebration, there is usually singing. Think about it. Weddings, sporting events, holidays, even funerals. Celebration and singing go together. In today's gospel, there is singing when the prodigal son returns home. This beautiful parable reminds us that there is singing and celebration in heaven every time a sinner, us, repents, which makes heaven an everlasting celebration. And Luke 15, by the way, has the lost sheep, the lost coin, and the lost son. So we say that in our opening. We are lost sheep, so God seeks and saves the lost. We are lost coin, so God searches and rejoices when we are found. We are the wayward son and daughter, so God welcomes us and lets the past be the past. We are the elder sibling. Standing outside, but God welcomes us in and challenges us to join in the celebration. Let us receive, welcome, and rejoice over one another in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And you should know all the songs today. The first one's a little newer. We've sung it before. So it's really beautiful. It's about welcoming all children home again. Joan will play through it. Forever has been won. 
you want to turn to that.
I wanted to start with, uh, it's kind of interesting because when Jesus begins and he's eating together with, well, I'll show you here's the next verse. It's a Matthew. This is the calling of Matthew. You know, we jump right into the prodigal son. But here's the calling of Jesus, of Matthew, Jesus calling Matthew. And it just, he's, as Jesus went on there, from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting in the tax collector's booth. Follow me, he told him, and Matthew got up and followed him. While Jesus was having dinner at Matthew's house, think about that. Matthew was a tax collector, he's a chief sinner. Not only was he a Jew who supported the Romans, who incredibly oppressed the Jewish people. I mean, I can't, none of us even have a clue what that would be like. And on top of that, the Romans were pressing them. Matthew, the tax collector, would, would charge extra rates to make it to line his own pockets. So he was twice oppressing his own people, the Jews. So they hated him. Matthew, and all the disciples, I'm sure it was a real struggle uh, for them as well. So, so Jesus, to be invited to his house, that means we have all things in common, Jesus. So there's Jesus sitting. Matthew comes to know Christ and wants to invite all of his friends to meet him. While Jesus was having dinner at Matthew's house, many tax collectors and sinners came and ate with him and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? On hearing this, Jesus said, it's not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. For I have not come to call the righteous, but the sinners. Isn't that beautiful? That's it. So, here's a couple. You know me, I'm an artist. I always have them. I'm a, a parson potter. Um, but here's some beautiful pictures. The, the top left is um, Rubens. Ru uh, not Rubens, but Rembrandt in the top left. My brother and sister-in-law, Linda, who passed away last year from cancer. They had a chance to go to, to Russia, to Moscow a few years ago, and they went to the Hermitage. It's one of the greatest museums in the world. And they, when they stood in front of this life-size painting, they just wept. They couldn't, they couldn't do anything else. So it was just so powerful for them. And so then there's another painting. And then, of course, there's the Righteous self, righteous older brother, right? Are you kidding me? He spent most of your money or half of your money while living. You know, we could fill in the blanks there. And now you're celebrating that? You know, he should be cast out of your will forever. You know? Uh, how many of you have a chance to visit a national cathedral in Washington, D.C.? Anybody have a chance to go there? Okay. Well, you know the beautiful time to go is in the spring, coming up soon here. The cherry blossoms, right? Again, my sister Linda and her husband Howie. Howie was a he was a Episcopalian priest, and he served as one of the priests at the National Cathedral. So they lived right on campus. So we had a chance to visit them years ago uh, over Holy Week on Monday, Thursday, going up front, having our feet washed, and washing other people's feet. Uh, the vice president was there that night with his entourage worshiping. And so it's pretty powerful, just right there in D.C. But one of the more beautiful things, you go inside this cathedral, and there's all these stained glass windows. And, and this window, you may know or remember, in, in the very center, that very center of the red circle, it's a piece of the moon, it's a moon rock. That, that's right in there. You know, God is the creator of all. And then if you go to the bishop's garden, it's so touching because you walk outside, you know, it's D.C., it's busy everywhere, but not there. And you go to this quiet garden, and there's this huge statue. And what is the statue? You walk there, you sit there. People come from all over the city just to cry there, just to feel welcome again. And the picture there is the prodigal son's father hugging him, hugging him to pieces. <laughs> welcome home. So my sister, you know how much I love that, and she gave me that statue, which I have it. I'm in my bedroom, it's always there. It's by the candles, or we light the candles and remember. So, so here comes Jesus. Some of you have seen the movie Jesus of Nazareth. Uh, it's usually shown you know, over Holy Week. It's a six-part series, and it's beautiful, it's powerful, 
and I'm sure many of you have seen it. But here's Jesus, and he's been invited to Matthew's house. And his disciples, they can't believe it. They go, Jesus, if you go there, you're going to become unclean. You know, you're going to be contaminated. There are horrors and everything else. They are Matthew's friends, you know. And Jesus looks at him and he goes, the heart of the law is mercy, James. That's what he says. And so he comes into Matthew's house and they welcome him. And he takes off his garment and he sits down. And where are all the other disciples? They're standing outside the door there. They're looking in because they're not going to be contaminated. <laughs> but Jesus, what does he say? He says, I'll come into any house where I'm invited. Any house where I'm invited. Us. And so I want to continue. Just play a little vignette here in six minutes. It's of Jesus coming into Matthew's house. And he sees all the people there. He sees his disciples outside looking in. And he's the master storyteller, right? And so he tells the story. I 
Christ said, over your body, I'm not. And the angel killed the second child. Please, said the father. Please, try to understand. You are boring. Everything I have is yours. My name is Ryan. It's okay. Your brother was dead. And it's alive again. He was lost. God bless Peter, right? You can see Peter, he has a really soft heart. And uh, Matthew, I mean, they're disciples, and I think about that as well. So. There we go. So, what happened there? Isn't it amazing how you can tell one story and reach out to the suffragists who think they're so much above everyone else, right? And then to reach out to the people who feel broken and feel that they'll never be loved, they'll never be accepted. You know, that's Jesus, isn't it? You know, people need our love the most when they're at their worst, right? And we can't do that. But Christ through us can do that, right? And does that. You know, praise God for that. So I love this healing scene. And, and all you have to do is look back. There's a couple other really great, I love these scriptures where Here's the, here's the wealthy up man's, you know, the son who used to have the finest of everything. <laughs> He's got nothing left, not even the food the pigs are eating. I love this one. He's come to his senses and he's just praying, what am I going to do now? How am I going to do this? I mean, I can maybe be a servant at my father's house. I just need to go back home. And then my favorite picture is this one. It's the father. He's just waiting. He's looking all the time. And just think about that. His son has been gone a long time. Distant land, right? And all the time the father's been waiting. The father's been looking. And remember, the father didn't run after him and say, don't leave, it's okay. He let him go. Because he knew it was a teachable moment. He knew he had to let him go. To learn whatever God wanted to teach him. Sometimes it's hard, isn't it? To let our loved ones go. Uh, but we put him in God's care, right? That's what baptism is all about, isn't it? We gave our son and daughter, ourselves, to God. And he's the one that keeps bringing us back as well. I wanted to close with a special song. Um, I realized, it's a little, uh, I wrote these words out, they're not real big, but don't have to be real big. It's a beautiful song. And it's all about hearing Jesus knocking, and I realized that what our journey is on this Lent journey for us, it's to answer the call to Christ even in a deeper way. And if you notice the third verse here, 
There are dark rooms deep inside where your light has never shone, and I tried to hide inside them, but I guess you've always known that one day you'd call me and I'd awake you from my sleep, and you'd take me just the way I am when you promised me to keep me. So we know I'm going to play this song for you during our offering at this time as well. It's a beautiful song, so I'll play it now, and then I'll take our offering. Thank you.
Many of you might know this, I just found out this morning that Morris passed away and died this last Wednesday. Maury, he's been here forever. He's been here since I've been here. We've been here. Just a beautiful person, loves the Lord. I remember um, I'm working on a second book, and in, in that book, the book's name is called God Moments, The Reality of God's Presence in Our Everyday Lives. And I remember I was working my way to the altar one Sunday, and it was 9.14, and we needed to start. And I come by there, and there's Maury, and he's sitting there writing the words down of a song in the book. And, and I said, what are you doing? He goes, this is a great song. I want this song at my funeral. And I go, what is it? And it's called Amazing Love. And uh, so he, uh, his funeral's going to be in Kentucky. It won't be here. Uh, so God bless Maury and our family. We'll see him in heaven. Oh my gosh, he'll be shining like us. And he'll be running around and probably flying. Um, one of Maury's best friends was Ruth. And they prayed together a lot. They're very close. Kind of like Francis and Claire. And Ruth wrote this tribute to Maury. And I don't want to read it now. When love rests in memory, its power remains within us, nourished by the bonds of family and friends, while time tempers the pain of loss. It's not just the big things, but the day-to-day -day sharing that builds a relationship centered on caring. Now the worn Bible is closed, but its inspired word remains in the hearts of all believers who hallow God's sacred name. Life's journey is ended, the good race has been run. Rest peacefully in the arms of Jesus. The crown has been won. Beautiful. Thank you, Ruth. I know it's hard. But you know, we'll see you again. Praise God. We don't say goodbye. We say, I'll feed saying, right? Yes. We'll see you again. So let's continue our prayers. Lord God, it's so hard to lose all of our loved ones, especially the older we get. There's such few close friends left. But thank you, Lord, that you never leave us. You never abandon us. Even though we abandon you, we run far away. It's so easy to do. And as one person once said, we need to be walking hand in hand with you because if we don't take your hand, pretty soon you're 10 feet away, and then you're 100 feet away, and then we don't see you. So Lord, help us to keep taking your hand. As you come first, we have taken our hand. Uh, thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for your broken heart. Uh, even your scars and wounds in the resurrection, like, this, like that beautiful statue shows us. You're raised, Lord, you live, but you still have the scars. And that's there to show how much you love us. Lord, there's so many prayers. You know what they are. You know our hearts. In Isaiah 64, you promise that even while we're speaking, you hear us. And even before we finish, you're already answering our prayers according to your will. So Lord, we put all of our prayers today for ourselves, our friends, our loved ones, our family, our church, our country, our world. We just put them back in your hands and just give us the peace, Lord, that passes all understanding to know that you're in charge and you're in control of all things, even though it doesn't seem like it. In your name, Lord, and just believing because your promises we believe as you taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, As children of the Heavenly Father, the Lord bless you, keep you, and make his face shine upon you, be gracious unto you, lift up his countenance upon you, give you his peace.